Welcome back, Awareness Explorers, wherever you are around the world. We are here in, I'm in Northern California. I'm Jonathan Robinson. I'm with my trusty co-host, Brian Tom O'Connor, who is in New York City with a storm raging outside his window. How are you doing, Brian? Pretty good. And I hope the storm will uh, either enhance but not detract from our conversation today, which I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, we have a, a guest uh, name is Steve Farrell. We'll soon be introducing him. Um, and the subject that we're mostly going to talk about is consciousness, oneness, and business, uh, three things that often aren't discussed in the same paragraph. And that's why I'm looking forward to it. But first, well, let me give a little bit of information about Steve. His name is Steve Farrell. He's the co-founder of Humanities Team uh, with best-selling author Neil Donald Walsh. And he co-founded and led two high-growth technology companies based in Silicon Valley in the 1990s that spanned across the United States and Europe, and uh, each operating more than $75 million in revenue. I know that's not an easy thing to do. Um, but by that time, Steve was also an officer in the Young Entrepreneurial Organization and the Young President's Organization. And he walked away from it all when he felt a calling to instead play an active role in creating a movement that could help people across the globe connect more deeply with the oneness of all life and the divine energy of the universe. And just as a side note, uh, you know, in the 90s, I uh, had some best selling books and was making a lot of money. And I also walked away from it all. So when I read Steve's story, it kind of inspired me, a, a kindred soul. I want to welcome you to Awareness Explorers, Steve. Good to have yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, and Brian, great to be here with you all. So, you know, I actually used to be a speaker for the Young Presidents Organization, and I used to go around the country doing talks for them. And eventually I kind of got, I don't know, cynical or just felt like this wasn't my tribe. And I guess you went through an experience like that as well. I did. Yes, I, I did. Uh, in the 90s, I had my awakening experience or a series of them and uh, and then ended up often in cognitive dissonance <laughs> where yes. on the one side, you know, I'd grown up very humbly with a single mom, a working single mom. Uh, and here I was finding myself in uh, surfing these huge Silicon Valley entrepreneurial tech executive waves with all of the luxury that goes with that, which was a, a very interesting experience. And then on the other side, I, uh, awakening of course means that we're understanding that there's no separation, that we're an emanation of the divine, that we're deeply connected with each other and the earth. And, uh, and the 90s was not that different from today in terms of seeing these huge economic injustice and et cetera uh, kinds of challenges. And, and so I felt like uh, I felt like when when you put all that on a scale, it felt to me like a kid's game that I was playing, where I'm just growing top line and bottom line. And uh, my wife felt the same way. And so uh, over a period of years, we made the decision to to leave it all behind. And uh, and then I, as you mentioned, I helped Neil Donald Walsh launch Humanities Team, and shortly thereafter, 17 years ago, stepped into this role with my partners all over the world who are deeply devoted to this conscious journey into planetary awakening and to creating flourishing at every level of life. Wow, that's quite a journey. Um, so you use the term awakening, that you had awakening experiences, that you're trying to help people. I wonder if you could define that more because it sometimes means different things to different people. Yes, it does. It does indeed. Well, so to me, uh, you know, this uh, the conversations with God book one was the was the awakening device. And, and uh, like most people have read now, all of the sacred text and the uh, books by scientists and Ken Wilber and philosophy and A Course in Miracles and, uh, you know, the Bible, for gosh sakes, and on and on and on. Um, and uh, so where that leaves me is with this understanding that 
what science is increasingly affirming, which is that everything is deeply entangled, that it's interconnected, that it's interrelated and interdependent, that it's actually all one. And, and the easy way to maybe uh, kind of feel into that is this whole astrological Big Bang that's often that uh, is talked about, where everything was a, was was a pinhead in size, and then it exploded. And, uh, and many uh, astrologists, most I think now believe that it's actually a living, breathing uh, Big Bang. So it it uh, we're in the expanding mode, and then it'll contract and reduce again to the size of a pinhead. And then so it's just a living, breathing universe like that. So we're all an emanation of that one thing. And in humanity's team, we call that one thing the divine, but we could just as easily call it uh, the, uh, 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 the all of the universe or love or life uh, or, or something else. It doesn't really matter what we call it, but we're uh, offspring of that one. You could also say we're an emanation of that one because in real time, if there's no separation, we're an expression of that. Um, and so that then has a lot of implications on our conscious journey. Most of us are, this whole inner dimension has a very serious aspect. We have our daily practice or our spiritual practice or our nature practice or yoga or something. And where we're, going down deeply within and really getting in touch, connecting with or communing with that uh, presence, which is love and life and grace and peace and blessing and so many things. Uh, and that then brings us into this new being state uh, that we can, that I think we endeavor to maintain throughout the day. And that's, that's really uh, the essential part of of our conscious journey, but so what does what does this mean then? Being awake, um, you could call it so many different things, but it's kind of living and breathing with the one, being an extension of the one, uh, and uh, those sublime qualities. Uh, you know, really being in touch with those things and expressing those things uh, with our family, with our coworkers, with the grocery clerk, you know, the janitor that comes through your office. Um, it, uh, so it's an entirely different, uh, way of living from what we were just talking about a moment ago, Jonathan, mm -hmm. where we were talking about our lives and you were training, teaching in YPO and where I was in that YPO experience too, when that, which is very Western, which is very much in our head, very cognitive. Uh, this, this is an entirely different way really of living our life. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad uh, that you went into such uh, detail on that. I, I really appreciate it, and it's really great to hear. I also find it fascinating. Just want to let our listeners know um, that we're having quite a thunderstorm here in New York as we're, we're recording. And just as you were talking about the Big Bang, there was a huge clap of thunder outside, which I might not be able to edit out, and I might not even want to edit out from the audio recording. Yeah, isn't that so? There you go. You know, yep. these divine, this, uh, where we're doing this work with this, with, we, we call it an inside humanities team. It's the big agenda. It's the only agenda. So we get any little agendas out of the way. And then there are all these synchronicities or miracles or whatever we want to call them uh, that, uh, that, are, that assist us, you know, e even now in the viewers or listeners that are here, that, that are here to, for this program, who, uh, can consider some of the things that we're talking about. Uh, I'm sure you have a very conscious demographic, and uh, and this is such an important time right now. It is, it is the most important time in the history of the Earth, and that sounds like a story or that you're spending or some kind of marketing thing, but it, it's really not. It's the this is the most important moment in the history of the Earth right now. And I know that you're quite involved in. Um bringing this idea of oneness into the business world and, and corporations. But before we before we go there, I just want to stay with the idea of oneness a little bit more um, because it's it's a subject, of course, that's very dear to my heart, because if there is only one thing going on, then who am I? What is looking out through my eyes? It must be everything. It must be 
the universe. And yet you talk about the divine. And I think for some people, when they hear the word divine, they think of that as an entity that's separate from us. And so I just want to talk a little bit about about that and, and whether that's really what you mean or it's just a good word to describe universal intelligence, which means our own and not somebody out there's intelligence. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's an interesting thing. So what, uh, and, and again, there actually are many interpretations here. So I don't mean to paint with a white brush as I talk about this, but uh, what, uh, what, what I take away from all of this wisdom is here, which, and by the way, that goes back over millennia, my God, uh, you know, Plato and Hippocrates and Ralph Waldo, Waldo Emerson and uh, Sir James uh, Jeans, an astrophysicist, and Erwin Schrodinger, and, and, and <laughs> on and on and on. There, yeah. There's so much that's been shared. It's a, it's, a, it's a shame, really, that in the mainstream, so many of these things really aren't well understood. But uh, so they, they, back uh, for thousands of years, people have been sharing that there's this one presence, and, and you could call it the divine as one side of a coin, if you will, or you could call it universe, which is the other side of the same coin. kind. It's the divine manifest, is universe, and that there's no separation. And when we leave that Western place of living that's in our head, that's all cognitive, where we're just kind of thinking it out from checklists and so on, and we, we come down into this conscious way of living and this place of connection, then literally everything is within reach. Larry Dossi is one of the scientists. He actually works with medical schools and has written a lot about this. He calls it the one mind. Um, and, and there are all of these studies now that, that are actually proving that wisdom is within reach. He calls it non-local wisdom. So it, it's actually, uh, we're retrieving it here, you know, within our uh, body temple, but it's non-local. It's it's from it's the universe's wisdom or the divine's wisdom. They're both actually one and the same. So, yeah. and we're an expression of that. We get to choose. Life, of course, is about freedom. So each of us get to choose. Then, how do we want to express that? You know, in our own unique way. What what are those sublime values and qualities for us? Because mm -hmm. uh, those are probably the ones that we want to express. We get to choose. And uh, the beautiful thing then about planetary awakening is that means that we're all doing this together and we're all choosing uh, our own expression from our own station in life. And that's the, when we talk about this so-called heaven on earth, that's where, that's what it is in, in, in my understanding, where we're all doing that together. Mm -hmm. You know, something that's uh, struck me about this pandemic we're going through is it is a statement if you're paying attention that everything is interrelated you know some guy in some other country uh is affecting you and me and i once read that we have a mil currently everybody listening has at least one million atoms that were went through the buddha or went through jesus you know that is one system but our minds create so much separation and I'm wondering uh, what practices you use to go from the, the mind of separation to uh, what I feel from you, Steve, is a very giving open heartedness. Uh, do you use any specific practices each day? Uh, I, I do have a prayer that I've, I created years ago and that's, that, that is, I adapt to my daily life. So it's not static. It, uh, I adjust it. It's a it's a it's a big uh, element in my own practice. But um, in, in recently, uh, the biggest thing I've been doing is just feeling into you know the oneness is omnipresent. It's omniscient uh, and it's uh, omnipotent. So it's all it's it's everything. It's uh, all wisdom then is available to it, and it's all powerful. So that's what the oneness is. And so I just feel into that because uh, I'm actually a cell in the body of that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's who I am. And years ago when I made the decision to do the work I'm doing, my life really was surrendered 
is surrendered to that. So I see myself as the arms and legs and lungs of that. And I just, so I love feeling into that, especially in the morning, early, walk my dog, sit on my porch. Uh, and just I'm, I'm feeling into myself as a cell and the body of that with all of that, you know, the omniscient too, which means all wisdom is here. Also the omnipotent, that all power is here, which is where so miracles can happen in terms of resources showing up or uh, uh, things occurring that are giving us more reach and impact in, in this really important journey that we're on. Because we're, as I mentioned, it is such an important moment. And uh, really now is the time where I believe all of us on the earth need to step into our own conscious leadership, every person. We don't want to be looking at other leaders and, and trying to take direction from them. We'll never go anywhere that way. Mm -hmm. And as well, there are no leaders on high trying to take us there. So the important thing is, is that we're giving the tools, uh, which is what we endeavor to do in humanities team, give the tools to conscious leaders to, to so they can step into the fullness of their own conscious leadership and go to the station that they're being called to from their own within. That's beautiful. You know, you, you said something that struck me because it's many years ago, uh, I started when I would meditate, I would ask uh, in meditation, uh, how can I be of service? And I started to get very specific downloads. So when people ask me how I made a bunch of money or how this book came through, I said, that was the tool I used. How can I be of service? And sometimes, you know, uh, something would come through, but even on a day-to-day -day basis or a moment-to-moment -moment basis, you know, as an individual, our mantra is kind of, what can I get? But when you change that, mantra in your head to how can I be helpful here? How can I be of service? You start to tap into this bigger body energy, whatever you want to call it. And it is a very big shift in consciousness right away. If that tool, if you, if you can really feel into letting go of the separate self and into the bigger, uh, being a cell in the body, which is the word you used. I like that analogy. Yeah, and I have friends too that 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 actually is their their mantra in the morning. It's how can I be of service? And um, you know, in mine, I, I don't really try and think into anything. I'm, I'm more feeling into, which is my life more. Of. And I think I was more of the ENTJ, you know, back in the '90s in my YPO days, which mm -hmm. means I'm more mental, emotional. Uh, I'm sure I wouldn't test that way any longer. I, I think I, now I'm more kind of just feeling into this role that I'm playing. I, I see that I'm in a, in a position here in humanities team, a 17 year old global nonprofit to, to really exert some, some influence. And so I wanna, I, I wanna make sure that we're exerting that influence in the most powerful and effective ways uh, in, in just to, as being as fully surrendered as I can be and really hearing clearly what is ours to do um, and to do that and not other things. Uh, so um, I, I'm just, as I'm feeling in, uh, uh, you know, as I mentioned, just in these last maybe month or so of really this, these omni qualities are what I'm feeling into. But I get guidance in, in so many things and there are miracles happening all the time in my life and in humanities team. And I, I believe that um, one of the things that came to me in the last week was that, that uh, this whole uh, basic nature that we are is an open system. And so what Jesus accomplished and what Buddha accomplished, it, it, it is an open system. It's not a closed system. So they, there was not any special rank or privilege um, as I say that, I think too often in the New Thought, New Age community, we are dismissive of these amazing leaders and what they did in their life, Jesus and Buddha. They're phenomenal, just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so I, I recognize them for that and call on them, you know, Jesus in particular, mm -hmm. in my case, uh, for guidance and mentoring and things like that. Uh, but I'm, I've been 
it, it's been ve made very clear to me, this is an open system. So you, you, you can go uh, as far with this as you want. It's, it's not, there's no upper limit on this. It's just a, it's a, it's just a matter of your devotion to this. And if, if you stay truly devoted in a pure way, then it's, you're like a helium balloon. You're just going to go to the fullness of who you can be in your lifetime. Well, God is agreeing with you because we're getting lots of thunder and lightning over in Brian's side of this. And <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's, yeah, it's such well, a I nice think... uh, sort of background to, to your to your talk, which is it's just wonderful to listen to you. Go ahead, uh, Steve. What were you going to say? Yeah, yeah, that's that. These are the kinds of things. I mean, it's just amazing. And over these, I'm sure for you all, too, you know, with your with your programming, your podcasts and your other programming, you've got a very pure mission. And, um, and this is what we can share, you know, we're here really, to empower and to uh, support uh, listeners and viewers. And, and this is the thing that's here for every single one of us, there, there is no rank, and there is no privilege. So, you know, the, the more pure we can be with our mission, where we're really truly here in service, or you could say, in a surrendered state, um, and the more devoted, you know, where we really, because there are days where you're hanging by a thread. We've all experienced that. In, in this state, though, where we're really seriously on the conscious journey, we can hang by a thread uh, for a period of hours or days, sometimes longer than that. And uh, we're fine because we know uh, what our life is devoted to. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's not any way we're going to release that for something else. So we can... And that's part of our own growth. You know, there's a spiritual gem here in, in our lives and in the work that we're doing. We get more strength when we go through those hang by a thread experiences. But then on the other side of those, often I find these huge miracles where on our staff, somebody passes away. Uh, we, were a we were all volunteer at that time. We go down without a replacement and then boom, within two days, somebody's here saying, hey, could I uh, volunteer and pick up this function for you? <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can. <laughs> hmm. That's marvelous. And, and speaking of mission, so your um, humanities team, what would you say the mission, would, the mission is? So the mission is we, we define it as uh, supporting people on their conscious journey, uh, creating planetary awakening, so the whole collective really is coming into uh, awakening and becoming conscious and then creating flourishing at every level of life. So in our, starting in our own life and then our, in our relationships, in our home, in our office space, our workspace, in our communities, in our country and in the world. Um, those th three things actually all go together. So we, uh, we're a nonprofit, so we don't have any shareholders. It's just that that's, we're here for that purpose. And uh, where, where that occurs and where we're fully conscious, uh, I don't think we'll, or probably we'll go to our next life, you know, the end of this life. But humanity's team doesn't, doesn't really serve a purpose anymore. We're, we're here just to, in our lifetime, to achieve that mission, which is a very bold mission because I'm 63. So to say in our lifetime, wow, you know, there's, there's a lot that's going to happen here if, if, we're, if we're correct in what we are feeling into. Well, we could see that change is accelerating and, you know, nobody in 2019 said that the world's going to be totally different in 2020 with a pandemic and, you know, everybody going through all kinds of changes. I know you are a very successful business person and I'm thinking for the people who are, you know, at a, at your normal corporate job or any job really, and they want to bring some of these ideas or, states of consciousness into their work life where, you know, people spend 40, 50 hours a week. Do you have any suggestions? Because a lot of times both you and I experience the, um, the difficulty of that, you know, you're, are, you're in a culture that isn't necessarily supportive of these ideas. So how do people bring that into uh, their, their business life, their money-making life, when they might not be in a supportive environment. So people do this different ways. And most people that I work with that are in, that are uh, business leaders are, are uh, have ways of talking to people from where they are. 
uh, and, and staying you know, pretty much in business language. And that can be very effective. Uh, my own style uh, is, which is really my life story. Uh, I'm actually just finishing a book called Beyond the American Dream, uh, which I, I hope to have out in the next year. But in, in my own, in what I've been guided to, uh, it's just to be straight out with it and, and not, to, uh, um, not to try and bend it you know, in any direction. Uh, but just to speak from my heart, of this is, this is, you know, how I feel. It's what I see. Um, what I know is that business people from my YPO days, uh, and uh, Jonathan, you, uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing we're going to feel into the same thing here. That there, and, um, that first of all, there are some that are very progressive, that are conscious, uh, that are really living it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, but there are many that where, where there's kind of a, the social mask and to the public, it looks one way. I know from my forum experiences where we were sharing deeply and privately, it, it was, it was not that. And there's actually a lot of suffering. There's a lot of pain. There's, there's a lot of dysfunction going on in people's lives. And it's what happens when we separate from the truth. If we're not living in this place of unity, consciousness of oneness consciously, um, you know, we're, we're then separated from ultimate reality. And that is going to have implications. And, and the implications are substantial in when, you're, when we're talking about successful business people because they've got their pedal to the metal, they're driving top line and bottom line growth. Uh, and, and that's putting a lot of pressure on, on staff. Uh, there's pressure that on the person that they bring home to their partner, uh, to their kids the money that is uh, substantial and, and growing, that's creating another kind of pressure. Uh, so there, there actually are, there's a lot of dysfunction there. Um, yeah, the dream so is I, a nightmare under the surface. Yeah, I'm sure, I, I'm sure you saw that, Jonathan. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, uh, so I just, first of all, uh, these successes that I had, especially the first one where I stayed on as the CEO, ENS, that was because of my conscious practices. So th there is substantial uh, economic prosperity and, and just life prosperity in, a, in really living consciously and leading consciously. And uh, people, your customers love it. Uh, you, you're gonna attract the best in terms of a team that wants to come work in your environment. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, vendors uh, are often the ones treated like dirt uh, in, in the Western world. Now, when we're conscious, we don't treat vendors like dirt. They're, they're also, they're part of the one. So we're actually, we're honest with the vendors. We treat vendors well. We're uh, just like our customers and just like our employees. And we're reaching out to adopt a high school or other kinds of things. And, uh, you know, you're, we're basically very loving. You know, it's what we are uh, in, in, with, in the, with these different stakeholders. Uh, and, and you can get massive growth that way. And... Part of it also is then you're sharing. We, we used open book management. So we would share, uh, we taught everybody first to read financial statements. A lot of people can't read balance sheets and profit and losses. Uh, so we, we trained people in, in finance and we'd, we, we'd uh, share all of our profit loss and balance sheets so people could see what salaries were, what we were making, what the margins were, what the bottom line was. And then we cut everybody in. Everybody was writing on a bonus together and participating in community outreach together. So you can, you can create massive opportunities as a conscious leader now because most businesses are not conscious. So I would say, uh, for gosh sakes, don't hold back and just try and fit in. Uh, I, don't, I don't see anybody recommending that. You can talk uh, more in a way that people can, can hear you uh, and there are leaders like Lance Secretan that do that really well. Uh, and then my own style of just really kind of putting it out there uh, and talking about how it worked for me uh, and the challenges I had, because I went from a middle kid and with a single mom who was a legal secretary to what I've done. And so there was a lot of, a lot of growth and many challenges that I had to overcome. And I just am honest about what those were and how I worked through those. And, and now, you know, what I see the, op the invitation and the opportunity to be for everybody. 
It's fascinating to uh, hear you describe um, running a business, running a, a conscious business, which I think is your term. As a matter of fact, I, I, I read your uh, conscious business declaration. And um, I'm wondering whether, for those of us who might be skeptical that large corporations who seem to be um, only focused on, on the bottom line and creating wealth for, for themselves and for the shareholders, um, whether, whether there is a, a, an appetite for this in, in large uh, corporations to, to, to run a conscious business. Yes, and, and people can find that. It's at consciousbusinessdeclaration.org. And you can just mm -hmm. Google it, consciousbusinessdeclaration.org. And there were four NGOs that put that together. The Club of Budapest out of Europe, the Goy Peace Foundation out of Japan, Case Western Reserve University, and Humanities Team in the U.S. We, the four of us worked together for over a year to create that short little uh, conscious business declaration. And its point was to allow any... Uh, group of business leaders, any business, any organization, for-profit or non-profit, to, to uh, be launched and then to grow consciously. Uh, so that's, and we, in these other uh, B Corp, B Lab, Conscious Capitalism, we didn't candidly see a model there. We saw uh, success and certainly progressive steps being taken, but we didn't see a model that would allow any business globally to really launch and maintain conscious practices. So, uh, so that's what that is. Um, um, in, in terms of, uh, and I'm sorry, uh, Brian, was, was the other part of the question sort of how you do that? Well, it was, I guess I was addressing um, uh, possible skeptics um, who are wondering whether there are major corporations who seem to be focused on something that really is about creating money for themselves and their shareholders, uh, their appetite for, um, uh, have you seen an appetite in major corporations for adopting this kind of uh, conscious business? Yes, yes, thank you. So, oh gosh, and this is so important. Uh, Mark Benioff, who runs salesforce.com, he's uh -huh. based in San Francisco. Um, he was at Davos, World Economic Forum, just this past January. You can see quotes from his presentations there. Mm -hmm. And he shares that there's a planetary emergency going on. And, and yes, we're looking after shareholders. That's one of the, one of the uh, or stockholders, I'm sorry, one of the constituencies, but we're looking after shareholders, which is the planet Earth where there's, an, where there's a planetary emergency. We're looking after people who are a part of us, including homeless. And, and his, uh, you might've seen his book that came out too, is presentation is, is it's time for the activist CEO that we can, can no longer afford a CEO that's just focusing on stockholder. It's that, that's what's created the massive dysfunction and the planetary emergency that's here. So you have business leaders that are highly respected. Wall Street highly respects Mark Benioff. Um, and, and he's sharing that that day has come and gone where it's all about uh, stockholder. So if, if we're not going to walk into this on our own, we're going to be dragged into it. So I would say to skeptics, uh, be careful, because I think that, uh, you know, Tesla is taking apart the auto industry now. Um, he, uh, Elon doesn't use words like divine, but he talks about the importance of life. And, and that, again, the divine and life are two sides of the same coin. That works fine, where, where our mission is to nurture and support life. So I believe that all industries are going to be taken apart that way. And uh, where we just kind of sit back and say, I'm going to get what's mine and do this uh, Darwinian thing, of, you know, harvesting treasure, and just go for top and bottom line growth. I think you're going to go out of business in the next decade, you know, or certainly in the next. Yeah, I think in the next decade, you'll you're going to get hurt bad. Yeah. You know, as a professional speaker, I'm aware that one of the hottest topics nowadays is changing corporate culture, which I've been hired to, and I have other friends that they're starting to see that if we don't uh, change our ways, we're going to, people aren't gonna wanna work for us, you know, and they're not going to uh, make the money or get the public goodwill. And that 
affects their bottom line. Even if they didn't have an awakening agenda, they do have a we need to live agenda and and the times they are changing. Yes, they are. And with the with the pandemic, COVID-19 and now George Floyd and all the other dominoes that have fallen behind that, uh, where we can see that this racial injustice has been going on forever for people of color, not just blacks and mm -hmm. people of color. And then we've got gender you know, issues too. In the absence of something like COVID-19 and in the absence of George Floyd, where we can just see these things that are just so massively wrong that we know have been going on forever. We, there just wasn't the technology on the policeman's uniform or the technology on a nearby uh, phone to capture. Uh, so it, it's created the perfect circumstance now in the sequester to really to, to feel deeply into what is so in terms of how we're living collectively and our own, our own uh, deeply held values and to assess those. And as we can see, there's a lot, it's a volcanic thing. There's a lot coming up for healing now, I think individually and collectively. And this is part of, I think, what's necessary to create this whole uh, planetary awakening. We can't get to where we want to go without a cleansing process like this. So my hope uh, and belief is that a lot of people are making use of the sequester and are, are, uh, uh, are, are creating their own U-turn, so to speak, or they're already on the conscious journey, but they're accelerating it further up the right side of the Y where we're coming into this place of really higher self where we really see ourselves as in service to life around us. And there's a financial component still, but it's, it's quite different. And we're, we understand we're gonna be taken care of. We're not just doing this crazy uh, rat race thing that we're doing over on the left side of the, of the U where we're unconscious and where we're just, it's mental, emotional, and we're out trying to grab the highest salary without regard for what that organization is doing here on the earth. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy to hear hear you say that, uh, and I agree. I think that a lot of people are using this time to um, to really look inside and to start to think about what it is like to be someone else and to walk in their shoes. And I just want want your thoughts on this because I had some thoughts. I, you know, my personal feeling about morality is I tend to shy away from that as a motivation for, for good behavior because um, it, it seems to be sort of rules of I should do this and I should do that. But when people can directly experience oneness, when they can look inside and sense that what's looking out through my eyes is the same as what's looking out through your eyes, then then they're going to then they're not going to be able to help but want to be of service to to other people or to act in a in a loving way and i think that's what's going to really change people's behavior uh when they can have that direct sort of emotional experience of of that we are we are all one and uh and then we might not act we will act not because we should but because we can't help, we couldn't do otherwise. Yeah, exactly, you know, and, um, and even for people that are consultants and coaches on the whole side of, on the unconscious side, they will share also that at the end of the day, it's actually about our emotional well-being. That, that's really what it's all coming back to. Mm -hmm. It's all coming back to our state uh, our, our, and, and creating true emotional well-being with all of the components of that really working so we're in you know a place of, of real joy we're we're agreeing on that from the conscious and unconscious side from the from the unconscious side there's a lot of work to sort of psych ourselves up and do these things to try and get ourselves push ourselves into that state and then to make money that somehow is going to maintain that state from the conscious side uh, as you just what you said, Brian, where we're feeling into ultimate reality, this one that we're going to, we've, our lives are, we, when we're conscious, we understand our lives are eternal, that we have unlimited potential, our lives are back and forth between the, from the absolute realm or heavenly realm and this embodied realm. 
and uh, we're we're living in that energy here. That's that whole connection and communing thing I was talking about. So we don't have to psych ourselves up or try and push ourselves there, or or try and believe that finances alone are going to keep us there. We actually that emotional well-being is our calling card. It's, that's that's the signature of this whole style of life. It's what it's what we're experiencing right in this very moment. I, I know all three of us. It's what we're experiencing right now and we can stay here we don't have to do a lot of work to to stay here because we're in ultimate reality we're we're just we're living uh, in alignment with with uh, kind of how the how the universe and the world works Thank so you, yeah. Uh, yeah i i just think it if you're unconscious and you're trying to push yourself there and psych yourself up i think uh, i think you can be fatigued and you can get worn out and yeah, actually, ultimately, yeah, very long. ultimately, aligning with reality and relaxing into the the bathtub of love that we're living in <laughs> is a pretty easy way to feel good. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And and then and expressing that, you know, when we're, you know, in my home with my wife and my kids, and and this is a journey. So it's not like we're ever in some all state of perfection, and we're just, mm -hmm. you know. Because uh, I, I don't want to I don't want to try and present that. But what I can present is that more times than not, you know, I we do have a very loving home. My 18 year old son is going away to college. Says, "I love you to me all day long when I'm home," which is unusual for an 18 year old boy. Uh -huh. Both of my kids were adopted at birth, and we're but it's it's a very very loving home. My wife feels that. My daughter feels that. At humanities team, we feel that working together. It's it's part of the magic of how we're able to do so much uh, and just enjoy each other and, be, and, and really appreciate each other. So um, this, this just giving expression to, to consciousness or oneness or unity is um, where, where we're an expression of it. And we just, we, our work is just becoming a clean, a more and more pure expression of it. So we're more loving and we're staying that, in that constant state. Uh, that's that's a lot of what this journey is for me. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. And another thing that I'm struck by from listening to you talk and also from uh, reading some of your material is that this seems to be so encompassing in terms of religion or point of view. In other words, practically ever at the root of practically every religion is oneness, but this is this is all welcoming i mean you could you could have a scientific frame of mind you could be an atheist and still understand that knowing oneness is a way to feel good and feeling good is a catalyst for doing good yeah absolutely and and of course you know oneness says then that everybody that's come into life uh over the, the eons of time is a part of the one. So Joseph Smith, who came here to, and started the Mormon church, he's clearly a part of the ones, and clearly sent by, you can call it God, or the divine. Um, so the, some of the biggest atheist leaders, we could say the same thing about, um, and Christian leaders and, and uh, persons of other faith traditions. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's, uh, this is the diversity and unity here. Mm -hmm. And we can, we get uh, unfortunately, uh, when in religion, I grew up in the Catholic Church myself, but we can get too caught up in this whole, oh, you know, it's a narrow gate, and we haven't accepted so and so, you know, uh, and so we're just not going to quite make it there. Um, it, again, if you if you read these teachings, including uh, I grew up in the Christian Church, so you read the Old and New Testament. Uh, there's a lot that's said uh, about this, and it's sharing that we're all a part of the one, one soul, one body, one hope. Well, I'm wondering if, uh, if you uh, mentioned that you have a guided meditation that might help give people a little bit of taste of some of the things that you're talking about. And, uh, but uh, if you have any final words that you would like to share that you haven't gotten a chance to share, that would be fine as well. Yeah, well, my, my final words would just be, I want to echo what I think we're all three doing here, which is just inviting everybody to really fully go to their station in life. And if and I, I suspect this cognitive dissonance I was referencing, that 
where we're not fully there, I, I think this is actually what happens to us is we, it's almost like an incessant tapping on the shoulder uh, that we can ignore or we can, we can listen to what it is trying to tell us. And where we listen and really open ourselves and then we become an expression of it. And again, we're all gonna do that in a very different way. This is the beauty of diversity and unity. There's, there's not one way of doing yeah. this. We all have an individual thing, which is part of this magic of heaven on earth that doesn't happen unless we all do it in our own way. So I just want to, uh, we were talking about it in a business context too, of, of, of don't, uh, you know, don't hold back. Um, follow that calling. There, there actually is great prosperity in following that calling, however you do it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, now at this moment where we're trying to go from pause, which is the sequester to reset, which is this conscious journey, this planetary awakening, it's important that every single one of us understand we are all leaders. We are all leaders and we all uh, are being called the conscious leaders where we're on this conscious journey and to go to our station and, and play the role that we're supposed to play. So that's, I just want to end with that invitation. Now, so um, important. for as to, uh, yeah, just a brief uh, meditation we can do if uh let's just for people that aren't behind the wheel of a car that uh, can close their eyes let's uh, just close our eyes and and uh, we're gonna just all kind of melt together kind of feeling ourselves in this unity consciousness this oneness where we're deeply interconnected in any way and feel our crown chakras and heart chakra all of our chakras opening to this beautiful universe, love, life, the divine God. Just feel our chakras opening, our crown chakra, to, which is our roof, to the sky and to the earth, to everything above us and below us. And um, let's just feel into, of course, the light that is, uh, is so present the light that is, is a part of all space. Sometimes we shield it like with a rain coat, holding it above our head where we're not opening to the light, but let's open to that light and feel that light coursing through all of our body or from the top of our head down through our upper body our heart space and lungs and coming down through our feet to the center of the earth and connecting with each other, feeling that light from our heart space, our soul space, our fingertips, connecting with each other where we can visualize all of us here that are part of the podcast and viewing. And also all of those on the conscious journey that are devoted to this work, living their lives this way. Let's feel into that light that's not only vertical, but horizontal, connecting all of us, and closing us, immersing us in this light. Now, as part of this light, let's feel into this omnipresence, omniscience, and omnipotence, which is the one, which is a quality of God, the divine, and universe. Let's actually feel that resident right here within us and with the light that it is a part of the light. There's no separation. And this is an, an open system. So there's nobody that's come or that will come after us that has access to anything other than what we have access to right now in this very moment. And in the omnipresence, feeling each other's hearts, where love dwells, caring and empathy, compassion. And even right now, people that you might not agree with politically or in other ways, 
feeling into their just the the sadness that you know is is part of part of their day their feeling so they're not we're not leaving them out either they're all in here with us now as we open omnipresence up to all of the humans that are embodying embodied on the planet at this time feeling that horizontal connection with all of the people that are embodied here on the earth and omnipresence where we know we're a part of them and they're a part of us we are all one and now the omniscience and the omnipotence understanding that we don't need to push those things away we don't need to pretend that they're somewhere other than right here we understand that in this conscious journey where we are serving the big agenda we're living our life as our higher self where we're a cell in the body of humanity and the earth this new earth and this new humanity that's occurring at this time that omniscience and omnipotence have a very significant role to play and that whatever boulders might be in our path whatever resources we might need whatever knowledge that we might need that these things are here and are being provided to us just poured in as tools to support us on this conscious journey and that we feel so confident in that that we're clear that we will go to this destination in this lifetime even though it doesn't look like that in the media today but the planetary awakening is 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 a certainty actually and this conscious journey that we're all on is a certainty flourishing at every level of life is a certainty and so we can just release any any thought that oh this is a big challenge we why wonder if we can get there we can just release all of those thoughts and just sit in the certainty of omnipresence omniscience and omnipotence and know that all we have to do is just be devoted live in this higher self and higher agenda and call on these resources and tools that are coming to us even as we speak to take us to our destination okay let's just uh, feel into the the light and all of these uh, omni qualities here just for a moment take some breaths We can open our eyes and uh, amen and amen. Mm. <laughs> we are all mm. one. I feel uh, clean inside. <laughs> all right. And I, I'm, uh, I'm grateful to be here with you all. Thank you, Jonathan and Brian. Thanks for inviting me to be with you. Sure. How can uh, people find out about uh, Humanities Team, Steve? Yes, go to humanitiesteam.org. So that's spelled with a Y humanities uh -huh. team uh, one word dot org uh -huh. and you'll see our website and all of them when you, when you look at programs and education and things like that you'll see global oneness day which is october 17 to 24 a big spiritual activism program this is our 11th year you'll see all of our uh, educational programs i have my own conscious leadership program and there are three uh videos that are free they're each 60 minutes so there's uh there's, there's three hours of free viewing on conscious leadership. Uh, and actually all the programs there is anywhere from an hour to three hours of free viewing on all of the programs. So check out the free free programs. And I think you'll, we're a nonprofit. So our objective is for people to walk away with lots of tools 
And some people want to go on into master classes, and if you do, great. If not, uh, we're we're here in service. That's great. That's great. And uh, check out all the meditations and all the episodes at awarenessexplorers.com. Any final words you want to say, Brian? I'm just very grateful, Steve, that you uh, came on our show and shared your optimism uh, with all of our listeners. I think it's so important that we look at this as something that's possible and something that's actually in the process of happening now. So thank you so much. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, thank you. And to the divine. Shout out to the divine. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great job. Bravo. Uh, oh, love and light that you bring to us throughout the day. Yeah. So making it easy for us. All we have to be is arms, legs, and lungs, and we get the job done. Right. Exactly. And, and we're not separate. I mean, when you thank the divine, you're thanking that's right. you and yeah. me and all of us. Absolutely. Not, that, that's, that's so important, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. So that we understand it's not something outside there, a shout out outside, it's actually all within. And we're giving expression to it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, on that note, we'll tell our listeners as always, keep exploring. Okay, keep exploring. Thanks for having me guys. Keep You're exploring. Welcome. Thank you for listening to Awareness Explorers. To learn more, you can check out our website at awarenessexplorers.com. Please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast app. We'd love it if you would post a review. And please share our link on Facebook and with family and friends, because knowing yourself as awareness is the greatest gift you can give yourself or someone you love.